good friends, the ones we hold dear The ones who will tell us what we need to hear The ones who love us, right or wrong And to all those good friends who give you this song Well, hello good friends and welcome back to The Last Walk Remember When With your host Ron Baumbach, and we're going back in time to the fun times, the snowy days of your life. So, get up off that easy chair, get those knees working, put a little oil on them, walk over to the fridge, reach in the back and get a nice big bottle of Hires Root Beer, open it, hear the fizz, pour it into a nice tall glass, reach into your bread box. Get a Drake's cake. I like the snowballs myself, the pink ones. Sit back in your easy chair. Turn on your lava lamp. Close your eyes. Get ready. The last walk is back. Life is too short. We get only one turn. With luck we find beauty, but we sometimes get burned. But if you've had a true friend, or perhaps in love, you've experienced the peace. Of heaven above. Well, friends, it's the beginning of a new year. And while things have been kind of hectic, very crazy, very bizarre, we have hope and hope for the future. And with that, my good buddy Paul, Paul Cassone, the singer of He Is the Good Friends, has a song for us as we start our journey in 2021. Enjoy the melodic sounds of Paul Cassone. Well, hey there. Happy New Year. This is my first recording of the new year. I decided to do something with some optimism called I Can See Clearly Now by Johnny Nash. always liked this tune, and so I started working on it today. I can see clearly now the rain is gone I can see all obstacles in my way Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind It's gonna be a bright, bright, bright sunshiny day be a bright, bright, bright sunshiny day. I think I can make it now. The pain has gone. All of the bad feelings have disappeared. Here is that rainbow. Right, 
sunshiny day. Okay, I hope it is a bright, sunshiny day for you. Take care. Bye. It's winter time in Long Island. It's winter time in America. I recall back with fondness to February of 1958. I was a mere eight years old and I was thrilled. There was a series of snowstorms that caused us to have off from school, meaning we could do one single thing all day, and that's called play. The best four-letter word ever made. The crowning of the king of the hill was awaiting us. Remember that game, the king of the hill? Who'd be strong enough to knock the king off the top of the tall piles of snow in front of the homes on our block, Houston Avenue. Reflecting back, the snow always seemed to come down heavier and last far longer back when we were kids than when we grew up. It may not have been, but for some reason, obviously we were a lot shorter than we are now. Obviously our perspective was very different, and obviously we wore mittens, and we could move our fingers around inside those mittens, and we wore those galoshes on our feet and our snow pants, and you could hardly move. You felt like the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz had to get all bundled up to keep the heat inside your body as you're outside. But we lasted for a long time. As the snow came floating down from the skies, we stick out your tongue, catch a little bit on your tongue. It was a heavenly scent of a gift from God. So we wore our boots, our snow pants, our mittens, our scarves, our wool hats, and earmuffs. We were fully prepared to take on the white manna from heaven. We couldn't wait to go outside and hurdle ourselves into the fluffy, cold cotton on our lawns. We made snow angels, snowmen, and igloos. They became a block event, the igloo you made. Someone always had a special wooden sled with the red blades. I think it was a rider or some kind of blade, the easy rider. Somebody out there knows that. We would run and slide down the street on this incredible, incredible ice machine that we could ride down. It was a two-legged, two-armed, two-legged thing. You hold down the front, had a handle, you would turn it, and you could make a twist and turn. Then along later on came these plastic dishes. People would jump in. But whatever it was, the easy ride or whatever that thing was called, that was the, by far the best. Now, our block we're thrilled. Everyone was out. All the kids were out. It would be an incredible day. It could have been the Olympics of 1958, but they didn't have one back then in 58. They waited every few years. The next one would be 1960. Now, our block wasn't that steep. It was pretty smooth, pretty straight and narrow right down the street. So if you wanted to really go down a hill, you would have to Big a ride to get somewhere. There were two favorite hills, two favorite roads that had the best hills. Coolidge Street in Mineola had an incredibly strong, steep slide down the road. And William Street, William Street in Wilson Park was awesome. Those were the hills you wanted to go on and take your sled down those incredible hills and challenge your friends and family to who can make it down the hill the first. It was fun. Oh, those were the days. But before we could go out and play, there was always work to be done. Now, nobody back then had snow blowers, the electric ones or gas ones, none of that stuff. Nobody had a snow plow. Nobody had hired help to shovel them out from the winter tundra. The hired help was us kids. We go out trying to make a couple of quick bucks, trying to knock on some neighbor's doors or go around the block and try to make some money. It was a family affair to grab a shovel, go out and try to get your own driveway cleaned out, your walk cleaned out, and most importantly, your stoop. Make sure that thing was clean as a whistle. You took a shovel, a pick, or a spade, 
You try to chop down, get rid of all that ice that was underneath the snow. For some reason, it always stayed underneath, and it got harder and harder and thicker and thicker and slippier. If that's a word, slippier? I don't know, I just made a new word up. Anyway, so the big thing was to try to get rid of the ice that was underneath the snow. And that was a fun arm wrestling event. Now, once that was done, we had to watch out for one thing. Flying snowballs. Now, they were fun-filled events. And usually, really very harmless. At times, however, one thing would lead to another. Such as, whose snowman was larger? Who's had a bigger nose? Who had the best eyes? Or it got worse, whose dad was stronger? Or the all-time incredible one was, whose mom made the best chocolate chip cookies? One thing led to another, and it was a big snowball fight. But usually it ended joyfully in nature. Nobody got hurt, and snowballs were flying all over the street, usually missing the mark. The only issue was if some professionals got involved and froze their snowballs in their parents' freezer. They would take the snowball, roll it up really well, really compact the ice, put it in the freezer, wait about an hour. Then these clowns would come outside and start flinging these pieces of chunks, blocks of ice. And once they did, well, guess what? They became the target, the solitary target. And the game, my friend, soon ended when they came running back in the house, never to do it again. Life is too short, we get only one turn. With what we find beauty, but we sometimes get burned. But if you've had a true friend, or perhaps in love, you've experienced the peace of heaven above. Now we would ice skate or attempt to ice skate at a place called Perks Pond, up or some people called it Herrick's Pond. We also went to the Mineola Library Tennis Court, which would be ice to form a nice rink. Now, if we wanted to go really big time, we could actually pay to skate at a place called Skateland. That is, of course, if the one and only New York Rangers were not practicing, since that was their official practice rink. Sometimes we just went there and watched. Watched them practice for free. It was a real thrill. And my favorite player to watch going around the, the rink was number seven. Number seven was Rod Gilbert, whom I believe back then was the only Ranger to have scored over 1,000 points in their entire Ranger career. Rod was my hero because we shared a similar background. We had similar surgeries, spinal fusions, and I always felt a special kindred to this guy that if he could have a spinal fusion and ice skate, and ice skate as a ranger, there's hope for me. But I never made it to the ice. I made it to the ice. I usually made it on the ice. Now, later that year of 1958, the New York Giants football team played in the cold tundra of Yankee Stadium. They were now the only New York Giants team left in New York since the Dodgers and Giants left the baseball teams, sadly moved away to the warm, sunny climate of California the previous year, 1957. So the football Giants, who still remain, were the only Giants left in the city. In mid-December of 1958, the Giants defeated the Cleveland Browns on a snow-filled turf by virtue of a guy who we all idolize. The kicker, the field goal kicker, Pat Summerall, did a field goal near the end of the game to win the game. Years later, I'm walking down Manhattan Street making sales calls. Who comes facing me walking down the street? No other than Pat Summerall. I was like, that is the guy who won the game in 1958. Pat Summerall, who went on to a great career as a broadcaster for football and on CBS. Anyway, when Pat won that game, New York went ecstatic. The field was covered with snow and enthusiastic celebrating players. It was unreal. Two weeks later, in what is now called the greatest game ever played, the New York Giants lost to the Baltimore Colts in one of the very first games ever to be broadcasted via TV, 
television as it is to the entire nation, except for New York, our hometown, where it was blacked out. You believe that? There's all snow on the ground. The Giants are in this exciting game. It's a national championship great game, the greatest game ever played, and we couldn't see it on TV. But thanks to the Miracle Radio and the credible voice, I think it was Marty Glickman or Bob Wolf, one of those iconic great announcers, we got to see, quote unquote, the game on the radio. A tremendous game. And once it was over, what do you think we did? We went outside, it was snowing. Gotta get my sled. Let's go play in the snow. The Giants didn't win, but it was a great game. Oh, I've been so lucky and I've been so blessed. In spite of my failings, I've found success. For I've known love and I've known good times. And I have known friendship and written some rhymes. Now, years later, we got a vengeance back against Baltimore Colts. It wasn't the Giants, though. It was the New York Jets in Super Bowl number three. When we got together and they beat them, Weeb Eubank and Joe Namath, Broadway Joe, beat the Baltimore Colts. You've been listening to The Last Walk, Remember When, with your host, Ron Baumbach. And the song you've been hearing has been, Here's to Good Friends, written, sung, and composed by our good friend, Paul Cassone. And a special thanks goes out to my great friend, Mike, from his studios in his basement in the state of Tennessee, for all the hard work on making our voice and production sound so much better. The Last Walk on a Block is available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. It's in Nook, print and Kindle versions. In the meantime, have a great week. See you next time on The Last Walk. Remember when. Here's to good friends, the ones we hold dear. The ones who will tell us what we need to hear. The ones who love us, right or wrong. To all those good friends who give you this song And to all those good friends who give you this song